but let's talk about what he could be doing next. Let's go to the quote board here. This is the quote he gave in the cage afterwards to Joe Rogan about his future. He says, we saw that Drickus is going to be fighting Sean Strickland. He is a training partner of mine. I don't want to get in Sean's way. I can move up to heavyweight, but light heavyweight is great. I feel great with this weight cut. So Luke, he's been going on and on about going to 85 and fighting DDP. Before that, it was, I want to go to heavyweight and potentially fight John Jones or Aspinall or whoever's there. What does this tell you? That is that he's more comfortable now staying home, knowing that it's probably Ankalaev next. Let's continue to build what, what he's doing at 205. Once you get past Ankalaev, I know Jan Blachowicz is probably still out there and wants another crack, but I don't know how exactly. It was how, a split decision in their first fight. Fair enough, but I don't know exactly how close he is to getting another one. Uh, I guess he could be. Also, he's getting a lot older, so his, you know, father time stops for nobody. I, it, 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 it's a smart call because what he's basically saying is, first of all, I don't like Khalil Roundtree is not a soft puncher, but Poetan seemed to be able to withstand the vast majority of it pretty well. The head kick, obviously, or uh, the, excuse me, the, the hook he didn't see sure. off the failed head kick was a lot. He also doesn't sell when he's hurt, though. You have to remember You're that. You're right. So. He, very good. So, but, I'm, but I'm saying, like, you know, Khalil obviously can thump, and it didn't, like, crazy beat up Poetan, but it probably had him, it, it clearly, observably had him measuring himself. At 85 against DDP, I just don't like that. I just, it's too much of a drain. We'll talk about Kayla a little bit right. later. So I think he and his team probably know that as well, which makes okay. So what are our options? Two hundred five and heavyweight. He'll take a he'll take he'll go big game hunting at heavyweight if it's there. But like you look at these guys at two hundred five. If Rakic, excuse me, if uh, if Ankalaev can't get past Rakic, who is the other person in this division who's going to wrestle him into the dirt right now? I mean, I'm not saying it can't be done, but there's no obvious candidate. There's no Phil Davis out there waiting. To drive him this way. So it's like, why not just stick around? What do you think about my three fight plan for him? Right, and I'm not see. saying it has to be three in, in the done because I think at 38, he's showing, he's not showing signs of slippage. So as long as he takes enough rest from the grind of these, how about this? Comes back against Ankalaev, provided Ankalaev beats Rakic. So you got to take your, your true style test there. You pass that one, number three against Adesanya to defend your light heavyweight title. Mm. Because you can kind of argue as Adesanya played his way out of the title picture at middleweight for now. It's a lot of losses in, yes, in a short middleweight period. right now, yes. I could see that. And then the third, you move up to heavyweight and take your swing, whoever's there. Probably going to be Aspinall, but you'll have to wait and see. What do you think about that three-fight plan? I don't hate it at all. I don't really know. Aside from Anka Live with a win this later this month, I don't know who has some kind of mandate for a title shot. Blahovich thinks he's got one. I'm, I'm less convinced. And so you could bring up Izzy easily. You could sell that one. You're going to give Anka Live his shot, provided he earns it. And then you go big game hunting at heavyweight. I mean, okay, would they? What would be the problem? Let's say he lost to Ankalaev. Would they do an Izzy trilogy without a title? Well, if they needed one, sure, but it would need to be five rounds. So, the worst case scenario would have to be some kind of co-main somewhere that they could just bump to five. I'd make that a pay-per-view main event without a title. It's they're just rivalry alone. I don't think you can. I just don't know if you'd waste that without a title and try to wait to see what happens if he gets one. I don't know. There's a lot, I mean, a lot of what ifs. I'm with, I'm with you that they could do that. I yes. don't know that they would do that. So you want, I got some early offshore odds of what they think Poetan would be against other opponents. Okay. Plus 120 versus Ankalaev. I could buy that. Plus 300 versus Aspinall. I could definitely buy that. Plus 155 against Adesanya. At what weight? There's no, no, no preference on that. I don't, I don't believe in those. At odds. 205, I don't buy that. Yeah. And then plus 450 against Jones. Yeah, that's probably fair. Uh, one name we're not mentioning in terms of who's next is former champion Jamal Hill. But Jamal Hill had this reaction in the crowd after Poetan delivered the KO. Luke, did you see it? He looks like Tyron Woodley in that Yeah, in I mean, who video. yawns like that? I thought he was getting <laughs> after something right there. He was doing the, like, like uh, you know how Anderson Silva used to, like, he would blow a kiss by kissing his palm and then, yes, like, throwing? Yes, Like, you know, what's the... Uh, what are those things in Alien that, like, they latch onto your face? Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, don't about. most people do like this? Like, oh, like that. He was like, he was like trying to, like, Well, he wasn't impressed by it, so this information was passed on to Poetan at the post-fight press conference. Um, Jamal Hill was seen yawning after the fight. Looks like he's implying that the fight was boring. I'm just curious if you can respond to that. Tem um vídeo do Jamal Hill bocejando depois da luta, como se dizendo que a luta foi chata. O que você acha? Entendi. O Jamal Hill tem um vídeo dele aqui na arena, tipo, bocejando, como se tua luta fosse chata. Ah, tá bom. 
Ah, pior que mesmo, acho que ele acabou de acordar do 300. Yeah, maybe he just woke up from UFC 300. <laughs> Dude, he can't miss. Seriously. He, he, like, you're waiting for him to be super cringe on camera one day, and he can't miss. He just, he just is... I mean, he couldn't have been less bothered by that. Well, here's the response on IG in the comment section from Jamal Hill, who said, you said that, but you will see me soon, and we will see when you wake up. Um, the internet does not like Jamal Hill's attack here. Do you think there's any chance he, he gets in the sweepstakes without coming back? I think it's possible. Man? He has history with them, and listen. Yeah, but what's the history? I mean, he's trying to claim they that. That the referee distraction led to the KO, but you rewatch the tape and that's not true. Okay, okay, but like, dude, Squeaky Wheel gets the grease. It, it doesn't matter. Like, he has. Okay, what if he shows up and attacks him? That changes the equation. You show oh, up and big punk time. him, right? Yeah, he can do the whole uh, Shannon the Cannon Briggs. Yes. Let's go, champ. I eat where you eat, champ, okay? <laughs> he can, he'll find him in Brazil paddle boarding, stand up paddle boarding. Dude, people get annoyed by the Jamal Hill thing. I'm fine. You can be annoyed by it, but like, he's actively trying to create a reason for you. To either he, he thinks he's like lobbying, I think, for a title shot. But what he's actually doing is making people hate him enough where if they book the fight, you would really want to see Jamal Hill get, I think a lot of fans would, see him get like crushed again. But that's incentive for the UFC to make it. Like, he wins. Yeah, but people he wins don't really want to see that fight. I mean, can Alon Kalayev get his chance? I mean, he's got to go through a guy who just lost by TKO two consecutive dude, times. Alexander Rakic is a big dude. He I know, was he, he was win beating this. the shit out of Prohachka before I'm he just kind of gassed out. I'm just making this guy run through hurdles, man. Give him his shot. Uh, Alon Kalayev finds himself in this position because he has donked it up. He is a donk. Yeah, multiple yeah. times. How the All fuck right. do you have a draw with uh, five rounds with Blahovich yeah. when it was your turn? Like, you could have just taken the fucking guy down and you were just out here dicking around for three he rounds. He round and got a triple-double, I think, is what happened. <laughs>